And hello and welcome everyone to the Comic Multiverse. As always, I'm your host, Joe. Oh, I missed a part of my thing there, Matt. <laughs> it, did, it didn't sound right. Usually I say, hey, welcome to the Comic Multiverse, where the worlds of nerd meet. Which, you know, is something I've always decided to say, but I've never, like, put it on merchandise or anything. No, no. That's something we need to put on merchandise. We do. I was working on a thing, because obviously, you know, I got the channel uh, art redone for my channel by uh, the very nice Joe, who does all my work. It's really good. I wanted to take the new image because it's a little bit more like intimidating Cape Joel and put like the uh, like the biker rocker around it and be like, yeah, Cape Joel. <laughs> uh, but instead of MC, instead of motorcycle club, put like uh, YT there for YouTube. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of doing. But yes, as always, I am your host, Joel, trying out some different facial hairs this week. I know I was, you know, baby face the last time we did this, but, you know, I'm trying it out. New stuff, new year. What That's about you, good. Matt? How are you doing? I'm not trying out any new facial hair. I have cut my facial hair shorter, though, because it's very hot here in Australia. Um, yeah, I guess so. But, yeah, not much has been happening with me. I've been catching up on, like, my... I had the week, like, off, basically. Uh, so I just basically spent the whole week catching up on reviews. And to put it into perspective, I was reading books that came out two months ago Oof. <laughs> yeah. but you had fun i'm sure i did i did i enjoyed all everything i read basically <laughs> that's good that's good uh pff, what's been new with me again not not a hell of a lot sitting here growing facial hair because what <laughs> else is there to do in this dark cold gray canadian winter very little <laughs> you've been watching facial hair grow <laughs> been watching facial hair grow i've also speaking of canada i've been watching that show letter Kenny. have you heard of that i have heard of that yes it's a crave tv original man i thought i was canadian i don't have nothing on the guys who do this show and it really <laughs> pissed me off too because uh the show apparently is based on the real life ontario town of listowall which is like three hours away from me give or take okay and I'm ticked off that the show was filming there for so long and it was like a Crave original back when no one knew what Crave was, when Crave was like shit they gave away for free. And I'm like, man, I wish I knew this back before the show got popular and before Americans started watching it. I bet I could have parlayed my Z-list internet fame to getting a cameo appearance. <laughs> Look, I'm Ontario's own Cape Jewel. Look, you put me in an episode, people are going to know. <laughs> yeah, you, your rating's going to go through the roof. You're going to get Trailer Park Boys numbers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely Trailer Park Boys number. And then, like, I see they're up to six seasons now. I'm like, oh, and Jay Baruchel is in, like, the newest season. And, like, Patton Oswald has a walk. on. I'm like, ah, fuck. They've already sold out to <laughs> Americans. I can't get in on this. <laughs> they, they, they've, they've gone past you. They've gone past your, they've gone, your, they've, your letter grade. <laughs> my letter exactly like man at least with trailer park boys it's like man at least they were 10 seasons deep in a mo and like three movies before they sold out to american interest yeah that's true and it's like at that point you couldn't even like like i couldn't even be mad at them at that point it's like well you had 10 great seasons where you were like our little special thing i'd be a real hipster to be like man you're not cool anymore <laughs> you were cool for like 10 seasons which is more than most people get <laughs> uh but yeah that's 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 what's new with me everyone still haven't beaten kingdom hearts yet been playing my way through that also man some good free games on the playstation network this month you got that new hitman game and you got a uh, for honor two games that i keep meaning to try yeah and both both of them very good i've been singing hitman's praises for a while now you have you were absolutely right and as I'm sitting here playing through, like, this new, like, Hitman 2016, because, again, fuck numbers and everything will be, like, three games called Hitman, whatever. <laughs> it's it's really good. And then I'm like, man, this is good. And Matt says the sequel is even better. Yeah, yeah, the sequel continues that story. And it's not in an episode format. Which is good. The episode for the episode format bugged me because, like, you can download it for free because that's the free game this month on mm -hmm. the PlayStation Network. But they don't download every individual episode for you, so when it's time to play a new episode, you have to go download yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, that, that, that's like that is annoying. <laughs> I've I've worked out a great combo in that game. Rat poison in your food, waiting for you to go to the bathroom, drowning in the toilet. <laughs> the one-two punch that never fails. <laughs> But yes, believe it or not, we are a comic book podcast, everyone, and we actually have a lot of comic book news to cover this week after Matt and I maligned that, you know, it's February and nothing ever seems to happen in February in the realm of comics. Yeah, no, lots of comic industry news actually happens, apparently. Mm. Shocking amount. We got 
restructurings. We got new shows. We got the promise of saving old shows potentially. It's been a it's been a crazy week, Matt. We're gonna cover it all starting now. <laughs> I don't know why I waited. I just thought, you know, build the suspense, they say. Always, always leave them wanting more. <laughs> but yes, I, I guess the biggest piece of news this week started rather early on, and that is Hulu announced a handful of brand new animated series uh, based in the Marvel Universe that are going to be coming to their app in the near future. Very surprising uh, additions. Very. They're all comedies. They're all animated, and they're going pure comedy. Leading the pack is Howard the Duck, which I, man, you know, Howard the Duck is one of the best, I think, redemption stories <laughs> in the Marvel Universe from something that once, uh, like, stood as their greatest failure, that George Lucas Howard the Duck movie. Mm -hmm. That is, like, gone into the realms of, like, man, that's so bad, but people can't stop talking about it. It's so bad. <laughs> to getting an amazing cameo appearance in the two Guardians movies voiced by Seth Green. Oh, I wonder if Seth Green will voice him here wondering i was just about to say i would like that for continuity's sake yeah from getting two great guest appearances in guardians of the galaxy to having a really kind of underground cult hit in the chip zadarsky uh howard the duck book which i think uh really helped raise chip zadarsky's you know profile yep. mm -hmm. in a way at marvel to where it's like well man if he can make howard the duck sell more than five issues i think <laughs> this guy's got fucking chops and he does yeah to now he's going to be getting a whole animated series written by Kevin Smith. They've got a couple interesting writers attached to this, but yeah, Kevin Smith has hitched his uh, has hitched his cloud to the <laughs> Howard the Duck show of all things. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, I am intrigued to see what he's going to do. I not particularly fond of a lot of Kevin Smith's movies. His uh, last couple have been oof, really oof, rough. Oof. <laughs> It's been a while since we've gotten, like, you know, Clerks 1, Dogma era, yeah. Kevin Smith. Yeah, Let's, I'm hoping that, that like, in, in a format like this, uh, he, he will flourish. I hope so, too. I mean, he clearly loves the material. He has a yeah. passion for it. He's actually done a pretty amazing job reinventing himself as a solid, dependable TV director over mm -hmm. on the CW with all of those shows. Yeah, it was a Flash, Supergirl. I don't think he's done any of Arrow yet, but yeah. No. All those yeah, apparently the, apparently the Arrow staff doesn't like him. That's the thing, apparently. <laughs> oh, okay. the Arrow staff. Yeah, apparently, like, that was a rumor flying around. It's like, well, why hasn't he worked on Arrow yet? Because someone on Arrow doesn't like him. Oh, is that <laughs> because he wrote, like, a really good Green Arrow book? <laughs> oh, snap, motherfucker. We can't have this man here. He knows Green Arrow. He actually wrote a story people like and read. Yeah. Hey, as much as we give Arrow shit, they actually had a really good episode the last, like, last week. It was, like, shot you like a saying. Netflix documentary. It was really good. <laughs> That's smart. That's the sort of like late in series life where it's like, well, we're not going to get canceled until we're done. So fuck it. Let's just change up the format. <laughs> but yeah, I, like I wonder if that that is the reason. <laughs> it potentially could be, you know what? <laughs> hey, th that's the fan in. That's not canon. That's the fan in answer right here. <laughs> Which, man, for all the shitting on Arrow I do to think I actually take Kevin Smith's side on this where it's like, yeah, this motherfucker wrote some stuff. <laughs> but but yeah he's gonna be involved in howard the duck uh they had like little uh like little blurbs about what the show is gonna be and this sounds like classic howard the duck he's hanging out with beverly and they're gonna be fighting dr bong yeah of, of all people we, we're getting to see dr bong <laughs> dr bong who before i think it's like oh is that gonna be like a kevin smith pot joke probably not but dr bong <laughs> he's bell themed he's a comedy villain he showed up in uh, the original Howard the Duck run, he showed up again in She-Hulk. He's like a really popular recurring comedy villain who I think has been relegated in like the last decade to just like, if there's ever a big meeting of villains, there's always like a couple joke ones in the back. Like, oh, look, it's Dr. Bong. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a good good villain to start with. Of course, Kevin Smith is going to do a pot joke with him. Of course. Oh, He's I not going to miss naturally. that opportunity. I, I can see it right now. Howard knocks him into the water. It's like, now that's what I call bong water. <laughs> oh, you can never get that bong water out. Once you spill it, you got to move. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, kids. Don't spill your bong water. <laughs> but yeah, he's working on that. That sounds fun. That one's leading the pack. Uh, yeah. Modoc is getting a show, which that mm. probably is the most unexpected. A Modoc show. Yeah, what would even like a Modoc show, like be a be about? 
Well, according to the blurb, it's Modoc running the day-to-day -day operations of AIM being a supervillain while also balancing a family life. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, right? So wait, so, so we're going to get to see the villain side of this, you know, which is what really interests me in this show because we never get to see the supervillain perspective of it. But he also has a family who the fuck married Modoc. <laughs> I like to think it's just like someone he created. Oh, yeah, he built a wife. He built the Modoc wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, honestly, that's pretty funny in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be like that Tom King vision book, but like really, but even more fucked up in a comedy. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, Modoc, just an inherently hilarious villain and inherently weird creation. Yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah, that, that'd be very interesting. I hope it's, I hope, like, the comedy in it is something akin to, like, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Well, like, apparently, like weird uh, comedy shit like that. It's funny you should mention that, Matt. Apparently, uh, a lot of these shows are actually being filled out by the writing teams made famous by Adult Swim and mm -hmm. Aqua Teen Hunger Force yep. guys. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I hope it's like that. <laughs> so you are, you might be on to something, Matt. So there you go. That's a fun one. Uh, the next one, Hit Monkey. This is the weirdest one. They're giving Hit Monkey a show. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's going to be based in Japan, and I'm like, does, does Hitmonkey even talk? I only ever know Hitmonkey when he's like, okay, we, we're doing a weird team, and we need, like, a sixth member. I think he was on, like, the Creature Commandos, and mm -hmm. I think he was, like, a member of Deadpool's Mercs for Money for a bit. Yeah. I admit I know the least about Hitmonkey. Yeah, I, I'm not too familiar with him at all either. This is the weirdest one. I don't know what a Hitmonkey show would be, and the little blurb talking about it didn't didn't really tell me much. No, no. So yeah, that's that that's a weird one right there. That one that one also doesn't really have anyone I know attached to writing that one, but the next one actually does. Uh Tigra and Dazzler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, just two people that are kind of not really a thing together. Like that's a Dazzler, what the hell? They're, they're not, but the pitch is very funny, and the pitch realizes that, where it's like two of the most, uh, you know, maligned, underrepresented members of their individual team, you know, fighting uh, to be recognized in New York. And I'm like, yeah, that's right, Tiger, one of the most forgotten Avengers, Dazzler, <laughs> one of the most made fun of ex-women. Okay, yeah, all right. And I think, like, Chelsea Handler's writing this or something. I'm like, oh, okay. so it's going to be like gonna be like girls it's gonna be like one of those like really or like broad city one of those yeah. like really raunchy uh series starring women on hbo and i'm like all right i can get behind this also too hey uh we got an avenger and we got an x-men together on the same show Ooh. <laughs> like that like i know that doesn't sound big but like this is like the first thing we're really seeing of like oh fuck rights changed we yeah, can yeah. do this now. Th this feels like it this feels like like maybe marvel had these shows like like in the back on the back somewhere and like okay we can kind of start doing stuff with these now because by the time these shows actually start getting produced that deal will have gone through which goes through in like end of may or something so yeah yeah something like that yeah i hope tiger and dazzler is filled with hilarious d-list characters and deep cuts i hope like jack of hearts shows up <laughs> remember me i died in the first couple pages of avengers disassembled and no one talked about me ever again <laughs> no one remembers me <laughs> Like, 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 literally have that show be the who's that of shows? Who's that guy? I, I want to have to watch this show with Wikipedia open. Yeah. But Tiger and Dazzler know them because they too are like kind of nobodies. They like they know all the these losers. know all the nobodies. <laughs> Man, again, you know what that show needs? That show needs Monica Rambo Spectrum. Be like, I led the fucking Avengers for a bit. Why does no one remember me? I was a prominent African American superhero woman before the other Captain Marvel, before Kamalika. When was my time? <laughs> ah, she's in uh, No Road Home though. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that's basically the role she's playing in No Road Home, where it's like, yeah, I'm fucking Spectrum, I know everybody. I was goddamn leader of the Avengers. <laughs> I know everybody, but no one remembers me. No one remembers. <laughs> Get Machine Man up in there, because Machine... <laughs> yeah. Machine Man is apparently funny, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. But yeah, I, I'm excited for that one. And then finally, because all of Marvel things now need to lead up to one giant team-up... All of these shows will apparently cross over in The Offenders, which I feel like is a joke you and I made, Matt. It, it feels like it, yeah. 
I, I feel like Hulu owes us some money. I feel like we came up with a fender. I, I, I feel like we did, because I remember us talking about, like, us wanting, like, the villain version of the defenders with like nobu and all those guys in there and i think i think maybe i think maybe we did call them offenders i think we did yeah we (laughs) wanted bushmaster and nobu and everyone else uh yeah go back and listen to that one everyone i'm pretty sure we coined offenders first (laughs) in another first for us (laughs) in in another for you know put put that down on the wikipedia page or the tv tropes or wherever comic (laughs) multiverse knowledge is kept in fact, if we don't have a TV tropes page, get to work on that, everyone. That's your that's your homework for the week. Build a TV tropes page for Matt and me. <laughs> Show your homework. We need your mileage may vary and heartwarming moments. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this this sounds really fun and really cool and just I I fucking love animation. I love cartoons, and I love Marvel and I love comic stuff and I love there's more of it. Mm-hmm. And I love there's just another thing to kind of get excited for. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to all of these shows. They all sound unique. And uh, as you were saying, like the Adult Swim writers are behind some of them. So they could be really cool. Man, you know, between this and that Harley Quinn show over on the DC app. Kind oh, of yeah, an interesting I forgot time. about that. <laughs> some people, even though it had a great trailer, I didn't forget about it. <laughs> Oh, man, I, I didn't watch the first episode of Doom Patrol, but everyone on my feed, including you, said it's actually great. It it really fucking, like, this show is set in the Titans universe? What the fuck? <laughs> like, this show, this as I said, this show stole all of Titans' money and used it because it looks great. <laughs> that's, that's the general consensus I was getting from Twitter this week, where it's like, oh, this is where all the money, time, effort, and care from Titans went. Yeah, it, it, it shows. It, it goddamn shows. Which, honestly, what a weird, wonderful time we live in where it's like, now nah, that Titans show ain't all that. Now this Doom Patrol show <laughs> yeah. is all that. <laughs> yeah. Gives me hope, too, that when we eventually get, like, Stargirl and Swamp Thing, those might not suck. Oh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to both of them now. Speaking of Swamp Thing, did you see Swamp Thing is actually getting uh, a Walmart comic now? They're I adding did. that to and Tim Seeley is going to be writing it. I did. They, they're, like, like expanding the these tie-ins, like, so much and like i really want to read them but they're not available here same i can't find them there's not a walmart near me well actually true story again small town i live in they're like they've been trying to build a walmart like a block up from me for like five years but like the small town city council keeps blocking them for obvious reasons because if a walmart comes in it will kill our main street and all those people will be forced to have to go work there but as as like a as like a young homeowner i'm like yes yes build the walmart so i can sell my condo for much more (laughs) then i can get the fuck out of here (laughs) but then at the same time i'm like oh but if i just stay with the walmart there imagine all the money i'll save just walking to the walmart (laughs) Oh, and then maybe I'll, I'll I'll get an after work job there at the Walmart, and then the and then the deals will be even more. I'm like, oh god, now I'm becoming that South Park episode. <laughs> Can't do that, but uh, yeah, that but yeah, Tim Seeley writing Swamp Thing, I'm like that that feels like that should be a book. That feels like that shouldn't be in Walmart. That feels all like that them, should be comic. All of the the these should actually be books, and it feels like. Th- but like this is the thing it's like oh they we can't put them on this book because of reasons so we'll just give them a walmart book which again are people reading them i mean i think so they wouldn't keep adding to them if people weren't reading them and if they weren't selling i yeah. don't think yeah it's very weird we'll, we'll talk about that more actually because there's a story coming up next that actually kind of connects to that mm-hmm. but uh yeah that's that's the Hulu news and kind of a sub news thing. This got shot around uh, after this news broke. Uh, Jeff Loeb was talking about this. Obviously, Jeff Loeb has his hands in this. He's the big TV guy for Marvel now. Uh, he basically said, "Don't rule out Hulu maybe resurrecting some of those Netflix shows that got canceled." Yeah, and and like him sort of saying that and like just them talking about it uh all the time seems to think like maybe because i remember i think we talked about it there was like a deal in place where they couldn't do anything with them for like two years or something they had a they had a no compete clause yeah so i'm wondering if maybe like disney like paid that out or something or like yeah broke it and then just paid it out so then hulu could get them or something well they have the money to do and what it sounds like is that netflix canceled them abruptly so maybe they were in breach of the contract exactly it's definitely possible 
which, uh, yeah, sh- you know, resurrect everything that's not Iron Fist, please. <laughs> or resurrect Iron Fist, but, like, make it, like, make completely it new. Better. <laughs> better actors, which, everything. It, which it basically was at the end of Iron Fist season two. It was like, yeah. all right, Colleen's the Iron Fist now, and Danny's another fucking character now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking nuts. But, yeah, I like the idea of that, although I hate the idea of maybe having to get Hulu. Now, is Hulu even available in Canada? I don't know. I know that we, it's not available here, but we get the Hulu originals through one of our streaming services. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's very similar in Canada. Man, I like this idea, but I hate the future that we're leading towards now where you'll need to own five different apps just to watch everything legally. It is quite painful. Yeah, I own like three or four at the moment, and yeah, it is quite painful. Again, it's getting to the point where it's like, the second it becomes as expensive as owning cable everyone's just gonna pirate and then yeah. no one's gonna win everything the, the bubble will burst on this no mm-hmm. one could ever hope to you know afford all the different apps you'll mm-hmm. need for this yeah it's just crazy to think and every major studio and every major content creator wants a piece of that streaming pie mm-hmm. and it's it's getting crazy now too did you see there's like a jk simmons show out there that people really liked uh i never heard of it but it was about like alternate realities mm-hmm. and cold wars between them and it got canceled but there's already like a major arms race going on to try and see which streaming uh app will end up grabbing that show up yeah i have heard of it it was on a streaming app here i'm not sure which one <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah there's too many but yeah I, I know what you mean yeah there's like you're like which one's gonna grab it that means i've got to go and get that one or yeah, yeah. We are in such a crazy time now where shows just go on TV now, like regular networks, to try out for what streaming service will resurrect them. <laughs> God damn. Freaking it's weird. We live in weird times, Matt. <laughs> but you know what's not weird? Uh, Marvel announced their next big super team, their next Avengers team, and it's going to be called the Savage Avengers. And it kind of lives up to that name. You got the Punisher. You got brown-suited Wolverine, Elektra. Uh, did I mention Venom? Did I mention Conan? <laughs> yeah, Conan's going on the team. Conan on a super team. And again, it's like you called them the Savage Avengers because obviously you're paying homage to the Savage Sword of Conan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny. I I was so into this because I'm like, all right, all right. This is this is this is like an edgy an edgy team. But who's writing this edgy team? Oh, Jerry Duggan. All right, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. And think, why didn't they just call them the Thunderbolts? They're they're a Thunderbolts team in everything but name. You know why they didn't call them Thunderbolts? Because <laughs> the last five books called Thunderbolts didn't sell very well. That's so true. that's At why least, they like, called them Avengers. Three fourths of the team have been on Thunderbolts teams. So <laughs> before, yeah. And again, it's basically the same premise as like the uh, like the way older uh, one they did the the Red Thunderbolts as I call oh, them. Oh god, it was the, like... the crappy one. Yeah, which oh, again, god. great, great, great team lineup. Horrible book. Oh, horrible! Absolutely horrible. Yeah, back when it was like uh, Red Hulk and Punisher and like uh, Elektra and a bunch of other people. Yeah. Oh, Deadpool. Deadpool was on that one too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He didn't, he didn't need to change his costume because his costume was already red. <laughs> but yeah, I'm okay with this. I'm checking this out. Uh, again, all, all those books of all the heroes that are in this team have been really solid right now, and I'm yeah. interested to see how the hell Conan works in a team. Exactly, yeah. It, it's looking very cool. Uh, Jerry Duggan was actually taking questions on Twitter, and because like, I kind of know him and I've kind of interacted with him a little bit, I felt confident in asking a very stupid question when he was doing a Q&A. Did you see my stupid question? I didn't. What did you say? Uh, I said, is this team going to have a financial backer? To which Jerry Duggan wrote back to me and said, yeah, Conan's just going to steal a bunch of stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm like, I would have it no other way, <laughs> Mr. Oh, that's great. And I, I hope it. I hope it's just like one of those things where like Coded comes to like the present, and he doesn't understand like how like the economy or anything works. So he just like wanders into like a bank and just takes money Take or something. <laughs> I Conan am taking this. You cannot stop me. <laughs> I have conquered your bank. <laughs> I have. I have conquered this Burger King. We will eat heartily, my friend. <laughs> Because, again, you know, despite being called Conan the Barbarian, if we were to look at him in D&D terms, he does a lot more roguish activity. He does a lot more mm-hmm. sneaking around and stealing stuff, actually. Yeah, yeah. 
is the truly funny thing about Conan. But yeah, I'm I'm interested in this one. It's it's funny, you know. I saw everyone on Twitter there. Everyone sounded like they were too good for the Savage Avengers. I will let you know, Cape Joel is not too good for the Savage <laughs> Avengers. <laughs> I will be there right up front. Edge me up, everybody. <laughs> uh, but, you know, from some Marvel news to some DC news here, uh, free comic book day is fast approaching, Matt. Yes, it is. And DC is shaking stuff up this year for free comic book day, and that is uh, normally a book you'd get for free. We're going to charge you 25 cents for. Oh, DC. <laughs> Which I'm surprised more people weren't incensed about this one, where I'm like, okay, it's Scott Snyder, and it's going to be really good, and it's like a villain-centric issue, and it's going to tie into what they're calling the year of the villain. It's going to be an important must-read issue. But at the same time, are you not really perverting the idea of free comic book day by even just charging 25 cents? I know everyone's <laughs> got a nickel and everything there, but still. Everyone's got a quarter, but still. Yeah, yeah. It's Well, at least it's better, like... um when they charging like 75 cents or a dollar or something for that um dc nation uh like the, the issue zero the big first issue of that uh by the end they were i think yeah yeah so it's, it's better than that but yeah like just just give it away for free you know I'm like, it's it, it is my pocket change really what you need to put yourselves in the green guys is it that bad it <laughs> yeah right are, are you hurting that much did brian michael bendis want that much money <laughs> I mean, arguably, yes, actually. Like, we, 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 we fucking joke, but they're like, I would not be surprised if they're like, we're, we're paying King and Bendis and all these other guys too much money. Yeah, yeah. We have, we've gone insane with stunt writers. So, yeah, we, we actually do. All of this money is just going right to Brian Michael Bendis. He just has a big sack with a dollar sign <laughs> and he's just putting all the quarters in it. He goes to each comic book store individually and collects the money. He's like a reverse Santa, you know, crawls down the chimney of the comic book stores on free comic book day. <laughs> all for Bendis, all for me. <laughs> what, do you not want to know the true secret of Rogel's art? Not really. <laughs> what, do you mean you not want to see adult Superboy? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck you then, give me those quarters. <laughs> uh but yeah so yeah th apparently this is gonna be like a big year-long initiative which obviously gave me flashbacks to forever evil mm -hmm. yeah to where again i'm like guys you really you really want to make me feel like the new 52 is repeating itself right in front of me well you know didier is in charge and he fucking loves the new 52 and he's doing everything in his power to try and make everything like the new 52 anymore boy is he again that sounds like a judeo thing villains that's that's our new initiative people don't want to read about heroes anymore villains we'll give them we'll give them a month full of vi villain issues remember them remember those villain uh, issues <laughs> oh, oh no way we already did a month a year it's gonna be a year of villainy <laughs> even more villains and apparently this is gonna spin out into like mini events like tom king's oh, got fuck. another one oh up. god Call called batman bane city and i'm like oh yeah because oh, bane's behind it all isn't it bane's behind everything he's behind Solving bane. he's behind dr manhattan he's behind everything <laughs> that's that's the final shot of doomsday clock bane comes in and breaks dr manhattan's back <laughs> <laughs> it was and and like here's the thing i love bane bane is one of my favorite villains i loved him in secret six but i hate that like whenever tom king has a writing problem it's just like bane did it bane's the yeah, greatest the it's his scape <laughs> it's his scapegoat it's he's like oh why didn't this make sense oh we'll find out when bane reveals wool everything it's like you know that joke uh in simpsons where it's like if ever you saw something you didn't understand and itchy and scratchy a wizard did it in tom king's batman if ever you see something you didn't understand or didn't make sense bane did it that's exactly right even joshua williamson is doing it now too because he's bane stuck did. in the constraints of a tom king book he's stuck I with what so. tom king has done we'll get to that we'll, when we talk about what we read we will because it's not a bad issue but it just reeks of bane did it yeah yeah I, I, this is going to become a thing. I just know we're going to be talking about this for a year. Now, Matt, Bane did it. Did you know that? <laughs> uh, uh, but yes, uh, the year of the villain. Look forward to that. But speaking of DC, too, uh, and speaking of those Walmart comics, there's there's a rumbling. There's a rumor. There's a disturbance in the force. And to be fair, this is via bleeding cool. So, you know, truck full of salt, you know, on this <laughs> one, you know. 
it's normally says take with a pinch of salt, but this is take with a truck full of salt because, you know, sometimes they just make shit up. (laughs) But yes, apparently they're talking about something that they on Bleeding Cool are calling the New 22 Initiative, which basically means DC in the future Mm -hmm. could be pruning their books back to only 22 issues. Yeah, and it kind of looks like they've, they, they haven't, fully started but like there's books start starting to be cancelled uh green books, arrow. yeah yeah green arrow books that are like coming to the towards their end like they're, they're, all their mini series are starting to sort of enter that yeah. wrap-up phase uh so it definitely is something that could happen and we we know obviously they're restructuring and everything this could be a byproduct of that there's been a ton of layoffs a ton of restructurings yeah. a, a brand new president that from like what i hear in the scuttlebutt and people I've talked to who actually either work for them or work for people who work for them. Apparently this new president is just all fire and brimstone and we have to change everything. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, I guess, I mean like usually DC does shit like this every five to six years anyway, and we're Mm -hmm. getting to that point anyway. In fact, Mm -hmm. we're getting there at an accelerated right now because DC rebirth with the extra shipping we got here quicker. Yeah. Yeah. We got here in half the time. (laughs) We, we got here in half the time and like a lot of books and series have stagnated and they're making a lot of choices that are making fans unhappy yeah. and as we said before they're paying certain writers who shall you know remain nameless arms and legs yeah yeah everything's like their their continuity their connected continuity that they set up with uh rebirth is kind of like falling apart now or not like even oh, a totally thing anymore Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Continuity's a joke there again, where before yeah. it was so tight. Now it's like, well, who really started the universe? Was it the was it the presence? Was it Perpetua? But I thought Dr. Manhattan manipulated things. And isn't he the blue-handed creation? You implied that he was, and now you're implying he's not. <laughs> yeah, but only these books will talk about that. But these ones will talk about something else. And then these ones over here will be something completely different. People got so mad at me when I said that in a Justice League video, but I thought Dr. Manhattan created yeah. the universe. And they're like, they're like, no, no, no one ever said it was Dr. Manhattan. Like, Blue Hand, <laughs> yeah. opening of the universe. They made several references to it. That was the whole point of DC Rebirth, to at least put it in your mind that he might have. There was a whole Titans arc where, like, um, one of them actually found the words Dr. Manhattan and something to do with the universe creation. <laughs> and that went yep. nowhere because of this. <laughs> short short ass memories on comic readers. yeah oh yeah yeah yes as of the last doomsday clock they seek to imply that dr manhattan may only have manipulated key moments from dc history but still that's not how they ran with it for years or yeah for like at least two years and that was after doomsday clock got delayed forever so again they might have changed it there exactly which is i think why the changes have happened <laughs> Yeah, which, oh yeah, that's a story too. Uh, Batman Damned and uh, Doomsday Clock number nine have been pushed back again. Uh, I, I can understand Damned. I think Damned was pushed back originally because of the, they didn't want like uneven spacing between issues one and two and two and three. Because they pushed back two Summer because reason. they actually had to edit two. Uh, yes, for had to more, take all the dongs in. Yeah, all the dongs and Harley titties and whatnot in it. Um, I so I imagine, imagine they had to do that to number three as well. There was even more dongs they had to get rid of in that one. <laughs> Batman fought a dong creature. Yeah, he, Dongocles was his name. <laughs> he was the one was behind an, everything. He was an ancient Greek warrior made entirely of penises. Brian <laughs> Azzarello was very happy about this creation. <laughs> oh, if we can just get Dongocles working, then everything will work, man. <laughs> He's the key to everything. <laughs> But yeah, Doomsday Clock also pushed back. Man, it's getting so fucking pathetic with Doomsday Clock, isn't it? But the thing is, like, they they need to like say something. They need to because like when people ask, like like Gary Frank, people say, like, "Why is this being pushed back?" He gets really, he gets like super defensive, and actually oh, I would begins too. begins like blocking people, like, and people just want to know, like, why are this being pushed back? And he won't say anything. Cause... It's because he probably can't. It's because they probably yeah, made him true. sign an NDA. It's like, why is this getting pushed back? Because they keep making me redraw because they can't decide what the fucking ending is because they don't know what their continuity is because whatever Jeff John's plans for the Watchmen were clearly aren't the plan anymore. Yeah, all thanks to goddamn Dan Dio and whoever else is in charge now. And the longer it gets pushed back to, the more apparent it is where it's like, oh, 
oh, so none of this Watchmen stuff actually ever mattered, and none of the mysteries and questions asked by DC Rebirth ultimately mattered, so... No. Well, well, that's the thing, like, obviously we've got Heroes in Crisis just killed off Wally West, the key to all of this. Um, yes. And, A yeah. harbinger of... Yeah, so it's uh, like, obviously doesn't matter anymore. It Not only does it not matter, but it hasn't mattered for a while now, and no matter yeah. how they end it, even if they end it great it won't matter because the universe has moved on because it has to move on because this is uh, sequential media and we have to have new ones out every week. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Which means we've had to invent a brand new continuity on the fly and it's just it's really sad. Yep, yep. And also, no more mentions of the Watchmen or anything afterwards. No, no. Which makes me think when Doomsday Clock is done, are we just done with Watchmen now? I Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> We had such crazy ideas where it's like, oh, what if they fold the Watchmen characters into this universe? Oh, what if they, like, restart the Minutemen, but it's, like, with, you know, the characters that the Watchmen guys were supposed to represent. So it would be, like, Black Canary on a team with the Atom and the Question and everything. But, yeah, that's not going to happen now. Yeah, the, the, the Doomsday Clock book even, like, showed, like, oh, the comedian's been in the universe for however many days or years. Like, yeah. again, like, that's something nothing, no one's done anything with. Nope, and then, like, Doomsday Clock even kind of undercuts itself by, like, making reference to Heroes in Crisis and yeah, making reference yeah. to other stories that might happen. Like, oh, well, here goes the timelessness of this. Yeah, well, again, that's that's probably something that was written in late in the game. Like, they, again, changed it all up and, oh, Heroes in Crisis is coming now. Oh, we got to do all this stuff in here, and yeah. Yeah, to make it connect. It's like, no, you never needed to make it connect. It just needed to be its own whatever. Yeah. But hey, on the bright side, uh, Detective Comics number uh, 1000 coming out very soon, and uh, apparently Scott Snyder is going to be uh, creating a brand new team for this story. Yeah, the Detective Guild, I think they're called. Was it the Guild or the Club? I think it was the Club. I heard people say both. G oh. Guild Club. <laughs> the, the good old Guild Club. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going down to the Guild Club. Going <laughs> to pound some brews with all the greatest detectives in DC history, which makes sense because it's detective comics it should have a team made entirely of detectives yeah and it's all characters that have appeared in detective comics in one page in one in... version or another like the hawks the hawk girl and yes. hawk man who originally had backups in detective yes. comics and who are space cops and space crime solvers also vic sage the question who where the hell have you been man you showed up for a second in bendis's <laughs> uh comic and then disappeared again yeah I, well we're gonna find out more about him in detective in action comics coming up which i imagine might link to this maybe i don't know probably I, not uh, i'm very excited about that i'm also excited about slam bradley yeah. being a member of the team do you know who slam bradley is everyone out there listening yeah i do because he was in new superman he was, and Slam Bradley was also, like, the first character uh, mm -hmm. Siegel and Schuster invented. He was a detective in, like, the vein of Dick Tracy and everything. Yep. So, in a way, if you didn't have Slam Bradley, you would not have Detective Comics, you wouldn't have DC Comics, and you wouldn't have Superman. So, wrap your head around that. Yeah, I also like as well that they, they didn't go, like, oh, this is Slam Bradley as he was back then. So, like, a young guy. In, in this one, he looks like a washed-up detective as he should i i actually liked it uh when gail simone brought back elongated man mm -hmm. for uh secret six uh his whole deal was because he can change his form he <laughs> uh lied to everyone and said he was slam bradley for like the first four <laughs> issues until he showed now nah, it was me it was elongated man uh, speaking of elongated man him and sue divney are on the team yes again detectives and characters we have not seen for a bit they were like murder she wrote style detectives yeah so that's really fun I'm surprised they haven't brought Sue Dibney into that Flash show yet. Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing that's something they're building towards. Of course. Did you hear uh, the actor who plays uh, Vibe actually wants to leave, that this is yeah. going to be his last season? Yeah, well, it kind of makes sense. They can't. They don't really have anything for him to do really anymore. No. It's usually always no. the same thing over and over again. Oh, well, will Vibe get the girl this time? I don't know. Yeah, oh, well, we'll just use Vibe's power to go here and do this. and Yeah. He's, yeah, he's reached the end of what his character can do. It seems like they're building up to a good writing him off. I don't know if the show will be the same without him, though, because he's really been the heart and soul of the team, so much to the point that Arrow literally stole his character and gave it to Mr. Terrific. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, don't, don't get me started about Mr. Terrific. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, man, people love that Cisco. Let's just wholesale rip off his character for this. <laughs> 
And they even joke about that in the crossover. <laughs> where it's like, oh, you guys got a Cisco too, huh? <laughs> Shocking. Uh, but yeah, what else do we got going on? Here? Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. Uh, ooh, uh, Marvel's got a brand new team too from talk of one new team to another. Uh, as part of the War of Realms, which is getting like a dozen really really interesting one shots and tie-ins awesome uh, tie-ins they look awesome very you got spider-man and the league of realms which is like a team of i wouldn't even think of but the league of realms is awesome and spider-man is awesome but yeah. i love the idea of him hanging out with them uh old cyclops is actually going to be rejoining the champions for a minute and i'm like mm-hmm. oh that's fun yeah uh, Gail Simone's gonna be writing the Iron Man tie-in. You got like, uh, what is it? Ooh, all the giant men are coming back together and being yeah. in a crossover. Yeah, I I love all that. But uh, this one really caught my eye, and that is they seek to try and do like a backdoor pilot to relaunch the Agents of Atlas. But this time, it's an all Asian team. It is. Yeah, this was really interesting. Yeah, you got Silk and Shang-Chi and uh, Braun Amadeus Cho, which actually really interests me that he's on this team and not on Champions, because if you're reading Champions right now, he's kind of really mad at Miles for making a deal with the devil, <laughs> so I wonder if this is what makes him quit and join this team. Ooh, interesting. I'm like, ooh, that's it. That's fun. And it's got like a whole Asian creative team behind this. And I'm like, all right, then. That's cool, because so many of these characters are like really beloved like cult characters who never get any love and i love yeah. the idea of putting them all on a team yeah it's really great i'd read this book i i was a big pusher of cindy moon and silk for a long time I'm like this book is good it's better than it has any right to be you should read it mm-hmm. and now it seems she only ever gets called back for team ups and everything but yeah i'm definitely going to be checking this one out yeah i'm going to be reading them all they all look really good and they're all being written by like really great writers I think this is this is shaping up to be a really good Marvel event. We haven't had a Marvel event of this size in a while, probably not since uh, since the last Secret Wars, where it's like everything is connecting to this. Yeah, yeah, they're actually going all out, and so they should. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe Secret Empire. Secret Empire was pretty big, too. Probably mm. the biggest since Secret Empire. Yeah, yeah. And you're right, they should, because, again, this is, this is Jason Aaron, everything he's been building up to for over five years. <laughs> Man, we're going to have to sit down. I'm going to have to write that out, but we're going to have to be like, here's everything you need to know going into War of Realms. Here's six years worth of Thor stories, everybody. <laughs> it's it's actually very simple. It's like a lot happened, but at the end of the day, it's very simple. Yeah. And I wonder how much of it is even going to be referenced in War of Realms because it's going to be a very easy jumping on point. Yeah, you have to imagine. I imagine there will be some, but like he'll probably explain it as well. Like, like it, it basically... Means. It basically breaks down to Loki bad, Loki recruit other bad people, Loki try invade Earth. <laughs> Loki do it other places first, but Loki do here too now. <laughs> Loki misunderestimate people he recruits. They turn yeah. on him. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, well, Loki and Malekith too, because, uh, oh man, well, we'll talk about that when we talk about Thor this week, but there's some de- there's some interesting interplay between Loki and Malekith that mm-hmm. I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's all new agents of Atlas. That should be fun. Uh, yeah, that's that's it, every man. That's uh, that's all the news for this week. There there is one bit of news that wasn't on our list that I want to talk about. Okay, shoot. This is a new. We we have no. I still have no idea what it is, but it's a new project that Tom Taylor is working on. Oh right, DC ceased, which I didn't want to talk about until we knew more. But yeah, he's really he's really pushing this one. He's being super fucking cryptic about it. Yeah, we have no idea what it is it's something to do with the avengers uh not the avengers the justice league and uh their last mission mm, which makes me wonder will this be in or out of continuity i have to imagine i i like to think this is probably like a black label book that's because black label doesn't uh, exist anymore it's just like a oh, it's really? out there. um but yeah it, it the art and everything that he's he's shown seeks to apply that's like something like marvel zombies yeah yeah superman shows up and like everyone's killing each other in the one panel we've seen and it's all very very strange and very out there yeah he released one as well of like cyborg in the middle of like all the all the people and all the people look like they they look like zombies i know people were theorizing for a minute there they're like wait is this is is this more injustice is this a new injustice (laughs) book no no we need a new game for that to happen i think yeah which which you won't be getting because we're getting Mortal Kombat first. <laughs> yep. 
But yeah, that uh, that looks interesting. You know, Tom Taylor, he's a he's a hit machine. That Tom Taylor, he exceeds in in, in everything they give him. He does. He's writing a uh, War of the Realms book as well, I believe. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, I forget which one he's doing, but he's doing one of he's, them. He's doing the one with like Cap and uh, Spider Man, and I can't remember what the team's called. Yeah, that's man. This is gonna be a lot to cover. I can already tell. Like, man, I'm not gonna get to half of these books. <laughs> Should be fun though. I'm yeah. excited for it. Yeah. Uh, do we want to talk about what we read this week, Matt? Let's do it. All right. Where Where would we like to start? Uh, well, we're talking about war rounds. Let's start with Thor issue ten. Yeah, kind of a smaller issue this week. Kind of a Thor trying to get his own family in order before he deals with war. And man, is his family dysfunctional. Oh boy, is it ever. <laughs> This, this issue is great because it really utilizes the storytelling medium of comics in the way few others have, and that is it's all about Odin. Mm -hmm. And Odin wants to tell his son all of these things on the eve of war. He wants to try and be a good dad and say, I love you, son. Good, good job, slugger. But even though he says that in his internal monologue, he does nothing but spew abuse <laughs> and bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And it leads to basically a Viking domestic situation between these two. <laughs> And it's, it's funny, and it's sad, and it's heartbreaking, and it's yeah. just a whole issue of that. Yeah, it's sad watching, like, like Thor having to, like, deal with, like, his obviously drunk father. And I, yeah. I, I, do, I did like the little bit of character development with Thor where he didn't want to engage his father. He's just like, oh, he's mm -hmm. drunk, and he doesn't mean what he says, but then, yeah, he just decides to, like, go, go with it. He, he lays into Jane is the thing. He brings yeah, up yeah. Jane and, and Thor. And his mother. <laughs> And his mother and, like, classic, classic boyfriend, son, they're like, you keep their names out of your goddamn mouth, old man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's on. And it's a fist fight, too. Like, they break all the hammers, but mostly they're just beating each other with their fists. It's it's Boulder who has to step in and break it up. Boulder, yeah. who's new, resurrected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has to stuff in and break it up. And it's cool because it's kind of, like, mirrored by, like, Loki going under fatherly issues as well with his father, uh, King Lalfe on Jotun time yeah and how it's not going good there either and it's not going good because loki has too much asgardian in him at the yeah. end of the day yeah and he won't like commit to the to the the ways of the jotun which includes like killing their own when they when they for, talk back to them <laughs> for literally no reason and it's great because malekith who's obviously the villain of the war of realms does something very intelligent and that is hey loki i know you're on our team and everything and you've pledged dark side but uh you're an untrustworthy motherfucker and you always turn on everybody who you work with so how do i know you're not going to turn on me when the going gets rough yeah yeah so this is him like like looking at looking out for for loki and preparing for the inevitable betrayal that's going to happen curse your inevitable betrayal <laughs> it's it's great too because malekith even states pressing it's like yeah it seems like you've been going around with like cosmic wolverines and trying to steal infinity stones and everything when you were supposed to be working with me so like the fuck dude yeah yeah like what what the hell you've been doing man it's nice to see malekith being an intelligent villain too it's like okay watch loki if he looks like he's gonna betray us kill him instantly <laughs> yeah it's like why has no one ever thought of that <laughs> To don't, actually keep don't the trust the show. god of mischief <laughs> yeah don't trust this motherfucker <laughs> this yeah you know, when we do do our big like okay what to watch for and what to look for there's a hell of a lot of like double agency going on oh, in yeah. this series oh yeah so it's like loki's with the jotuns and the bad guys but he's not really with them he's really no. more for himself but he loves his mother and he kind of made okay with thor so he might be good but he might not be yeah and is he still affected by the stuff that happened in infinity wars since after that series he kind of wanted to try and become a hero because of yeah. the celestials fucking with his life and <laughs> yeah but m maybe they'll explain that in that cosmic wolverine book yeah yeah you don't know. <laughs> and then you got cull the serpent who's really mad at his brother but he's being sent in undercover anyway mm -hmm. with the dark elves because obviously he's the god of fear so they would believe he'd want to turn coat but maybe he's turn coding for real because odin's a piece of shit but we yeah. don't know and he hate he hates his brother and wants the crown for himself and and he was and he was the villain of like the last big uh <laughs> like asgard centric event anyway it's so some real game of thrown shit right here <laughs> it it really really is we're gonna have to have charts when we put this together <laughs> charts and like di venn diagrams and, and pie, pie charts <laughs> uh, 
Absolutely. And uh, it, it actually ends on kind of a funny note because, like, you know, who's Odin going to talk to about his problems in a nice bit of continuity, as it should be, because Aaron writes both. He talks to Iron Man, of all people. <laughs> I, I thought that was really great. It's like, who does the drunk turn to when he wants to get his life around? Well, turn to the drunk who turned his life around. <laughs> Exactly. It's a very nice moment. And also like, yeah, because Odin has basically become spy master now for the Avenger. So I yeah. like he's hanging out with them more. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really cool. And and the final gut punch there where he's like, perhaps the greatest lesson I taught my son was how to not be a bastard like me. Yeah. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> ugh. And Odin talking about his own childhood and how shitty that was. And I'm like, <laughs> God damn, this is the feel bad issue of yeah. the year. It was a feel bad issue, but it was a great issue. It was. And a lot of people didn't like it. They're like, oh, this is filler. Oh, this isn't War yeah. of Realms. I'm like, yes, this is called character work. Yeah, this is character building. This is usually what happens in filler stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, they, oh, they they had a fight and it didn't mean anything. No, it meant everything. <laughs> yeah, it meant quite a bit. I'm not going to tell you you're reading it wrong, but you're reading it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what, uh, what else did we have this week, Matt? What else did you uh, want to talk about? We had... Uh, let me just grab my chart. We oh we had Detective Comics issue nine hundred ninety eight. We did, we did the continued story of who is fucking with Batman's life, and we're a little bit closer, but nowhere closer in this one. We're a little bit closer, but it's gone in a way that I didn't really expect. It took a swerve. It took a major swerve into the Matrix, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll 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 get to that. Yeah, so it was cool seeing. Uh, tomasi again used the hellbat armor i i am liking yeah. this is i said in my review this is going to be a thing now where everything he writes he's going to try and include the hellbat armor because he did it I in his superman should. run he did it on his yep. batman and robin run he did it here yep <laughs> i like that's his thing that's his yeah. trademark now remember this cool suit of armor i made yeah yeah <laughs> It's a great suit, and I like Batman justifying why he doesn't use it all the time. It's like, yeah, it friggin' drains my metabolic system to use it. Every moment I'm in it, it could kill me. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, I like what we got, actually got like some intricate details about it. Someone someone in my comments said it's like the Berserk armor from Berserk, and I'm like, God damn it, it absolutely is. Yep, <laughs> yep. <yeah>, yeah. <laughs> Like, literally, if it's like, oh, and I've designed the suit to keep fighting even if I pass out, and I'm like, god damn it, you anime fan, Batman. <laughs> Batman, Alfred, oh, are you watching the Japanese animes again, sir? Yes, Alfred, I'm I'm looking for ideas. <laughs> yes, they have so many ideas. <laughs> I just watched all of Troll Slayer, they, or uh, Goblin Slayer. They say this guy is based on me. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the Hellbat armor is great. Getting to see Etrigan is great. He was in two books this week. He was, yeah. Yeah, seeing him him and great was great, and I like that Tomasi made him rhyme, but also just talk normally as well. Yeah, he can do both. <laughs> yeah, um, and I like that it, it continued the, the, the story of uh the the mentors of Bruce and sent him to Silas Stone, who yes. de developed all his gadgets. Yeah, a bit of a retcon just a little bit <laughs> it's it's like i'm like well i would have thought it would have been lucius fox who yeah, built yeah. his first grappling gun but i'm like all right silas stone smart guy i'll accept it nice justice league connection there yeah yeah but that might not even have been silas stone no. he was talking to no it was like some virtual reality which made me think like is the villain going to be revealed to be bruce himself like is this his mind like attacking him <laughs> Is, the, is this a simulation? Is this Batman yeah. putting himself into a Kobayashi Maru situation where there is no way to win? Yeah, yeah, like trying to set something up or something. Like this is this is how I'm as great as I am because I run these no-win scenarios all the time? Yeah, it, it's very strange. Uh, again, you know, we see like a little tiny Batman to which everyone said, oh, in my comments, they're like, oh, it's Batmite, it's Batmite. No, it's not. Bat no. Batmite's a little cartoon. This is a little man dressed as Batman. This, this, is, this is boy Bruce Wayne. Boy Br or something. I don't yeah. even know. Yeah, I have no idea. It's interesting, though. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Tabasi's building with this. I hope they don't do the it was all a dream ending. I hope there's a little bit more to it. I do as well. I think it's like, as we, as you said, it might be like some virtual reality thing mm -hmm. Batman's setting up to try and make sure like his mind's okay or like he, he realizes what makes him Batman or something. Although if it was an all a dream ending, then it would be like, hey, Tom King, this is how you tell a dream arc. Yeah, I was thinking that when I was like, this is like, way better than what 
Tom King's doing with this whole nightmare thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, you you don't give the game away right away. No. You wait till the end to do it. Yeah, I had a, a, an old theory, and I'm wondering if like maybe maybe this is all like a virtual reality thing, but maybe it's like Arkham Knight playing it in his in his virtual mm-hmm. reality thing to try and find mm-hmm. a way to beat mm-hmm. Batman. Mm, I'd be all right with that too, because then you're setting up the villain for the next arc for issue a thousand. But you did it in a really interesting way. Yeah, yeah. And what's good about the story wouldn't be subtracted by that. It's like, no, no, no. You were watching Batman. It was a virtual Batman, but it was Batman at its best. Yeah, yeah. I'd be okay with that one. That one would be fine. Yeah. Uh, I guess the big Marvel book we had this week was issue one of Avengers: No Road Home. Yeah, this one was really, really pretty cool it was i i would say i am more invested in this number one than i mm-hmm. i was in number one of no surrender mm-hmm. oh i I'm i really a, i really liked where this one was going yeah i'm a bit more invested mainly because like i love the characters they've chosen to use same they picked a really good team yeah and the 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 book just gets gets right into it straight away it does it doesn't waste any time it just gets rolling 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 uh also too uh this book is written by three people does not feel like it was written by three people again like avengers uh no surrender that was written by three people you could not tell at all yeah it's very it's very simpatico this one yeah wade our good friend zub and i think thompson is on this one too and they're really really good Mm mm-hmm yeah it's, I like it too because Hercules gets to be the POV character for most of he it. He gets to be the POV character. He's like the main character as well because it's all revolving around like his people, the Greek gods. Olympus, which is a beautiful twist because it's like, yeah, you have more than just the Asgardians in the Marvel Universe, guys. You can use yeah. other pantheons. Yeah, yeah, and they're, um, they're, they're using them to great effect by showing them that they're not just like myths and legends. They're actually like probably a pretty formidable uh force especially with this um new god the god of was she the god of queen of the night yeah nix the goddess Nyx, of night yeah that you can't say her name because that'll make yeah, her she, appear she's like, got a candle jack thing going on <laughs> yes yeah, slender man or something yeah say it in the mirror three times nix 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah she'll stick your fingers her fingers through your eyes like she did to uh, <laughs> oh poor scarlet witch yeah this this was just built really really well to explain why all the heroes are here obviously you know hercules has a reason to be there uh they check up on vision and they're like hey wasn't vision dying at the end of no surrender and no one really picked up on that yes yeah, the, the, the whole point of his part in this book is trying to figure out why. And I, I liked as well that like he's like, I don't really care that I'm dying. It's just part of life that me accepting that makes me more human. Yes, there's nothing more human than living and dying. <laughs> and, I, and I like that Spectrum's like, hey, so I'm like pretty much effectively immortal thanks to my electric powers. Like, does that make me less human than you? yeah really that's but again using spectrum monica rambo to good effect yeah yeah that's solid uh i like uh hawkeye and scarlet witch are like hey remember when we were bad guys yeah no <laughs> one talks about that anymore we totally were both bad guys and no one brings it up anymore yeah. hey, hey, hey remember when i was goliath <laughs> yeah wow well, what was up with that hey ronan that was a cool costume should i be ronan again for a while <laughs> Don't be shocked if that happens with the new movie. <laughs> no, they and and they also um bring back uh the the tension between Hulk and Clint. Yes, because at the end of original No Surrender, Clint and Bruce Banner buried the hatch. It's like, oh, sorry about you killing me in an assisted suicide. It's like, ah, it's okay. Only for the Hulk to show up here and be like, I didn't say I was sorry. Yeah, yeah, I Banner did, but I didn't. <laughs> you didn't talk to me, motherfucker. In fact, I'm shanghaiing you into this mission. <laughs> and you better protect your neck son is all i'm saying i might push you down a chasm you don't know <laughs> and this is new darker grittier eviler hulk so yeah. he might do it yeah the, yeah this is the immortal hulk in a beautiful bit of storytelling too it's like well how are they going to justify having the hulk here when in the hulk book they talk about it being kind of like a werewolf thing where he's hulk by night oh eternal darkness that's why yeah that, that that's a great great bit of like continuity there <laughs> so much good continuity in this book you know zub and wade and thompson they're masters of this being like hey you read everything we're gonna reward you for reading everything yeah and again it's like that new guardians book hey like where's rocket oh he's on earth accosting people in a hardware store and joining this new avengers team 
this is how this is how you do it and just yeah just so good such fun such classic avengers just just good stuff and like they promise so much more like if you've looked at the covers there it looks like the challenger is coming back yeah yeah they, they're like bringing back all these things that did in the first uh story of no surrender and yeah they're, they're just playing with all in that in that toy box making it a true sequel and i like to yeah. where it's like well why why are we seeing the second string avengers well because they never got the spotlight and they deserve it for one but for two voyager is recruiting the people she knew from the original no surrender because those are her friends she didn't meet captain america tony or thor really no no she only really met them at the end and she didn't form a bond with them i like that but no i'm going to my friends the people i formed bonds with i i don't care that they're second string avengers <laughs> They're special to me, damn it! I'm like, oh, Voyager, you're you're a fan like us. <laughs> that that endears you to me, Voyager. <laughs> but yeah, no, no road home is great. It's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have this week? Uh, ooh, we had the Batman who laughs. Ooh, we did too. Yeah, fun fun little story here. We get to see more of James Gordon Jr., who we have not seen in forever. Yeah, and we learn his place in the story, and we learn that Bruce has come to him in hopes that the genius serial killer James will know where the Batman Who Laughs is going to strike next. He's basically a character from Hannibal. I need I need your brain. I, I, I need yep. to be Will, and you need to be Hannibal. <laughs> And it's great because James is like, no, I'm on my super secret probation. I'm taking my super secret uh, experimental antipsychotics. I'm good. And Batman's like, stop taking your fucking pills. <laughs> yeah, they don't work, but they do, Batman. They do. <laughs> Maybe you should take some. Fuck off. You need... Look, Jim, I need your son to have a goddamn relapse into psychosis <laughs> so he can help me save yeah. the city. Stop this cocaine off my bat wing. <laughs> <laughs> and and jim is just like this is so fucked up batman this is so wrong yeah yeah we're in fucked up do you see my red crazy eyes <laughs> like everything is so bad in this book and going to hell and it's just like it's like we gotta keep going we gotta keep digging through yeah, we gotta keep going we I can't let the batman he laughs win and like you can tell batman's getting affected by the joker poison because he's getting more brutal in his own fighting like when he's <laughs> fighting the grim knight and he like attaches him to a train and lets him get dragged yeah. away yeah yeah like doesn't want to shoot him but we'll just like let him be pulled along by a train get road hauled by a train <laughs> it's it's a nice little subtle thing there it's like see how little he's caring now yeah and also they never really explain because like the grim knight comes back and comes uh for gordon but he wants jim gordon not james mm -hmm. Um, yeah. because that's he's like the final piece and the trigger that will set off this fail safe um yeah. but he brings down like a, a jetliner and yes that's never explained like batman stopped it <laughs> or something well yeah. I, maybe he was like threatening with an empty hand where it's like you know give me give me commissioner gordon or i'll blow up this plane that i can that's do true. that's true well he did like cancel one of, like he did like blow up one of its engines and it was like kind of falling from the sky they were fine the <laughs> captain captain sully was flying and they're fine <laughs> yeah, he landed it in the hudson river <laughs> dc universe's captain S no uh batman called superman's like hey superman can you get that for me thanks <laughs> hangs up <laughs> <laughs> now batman are, are you going crazy you sound very crazy on the phone i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> you're crazy i'm not crazy <laughs> it's a video call really because your eyes look really red you need some drops man no, i'm good <laughs> <laughs> just been up for a couple days i'm good <laughs> and, and the big resolution at the end of this story is like you know uh batman you know maybe my problem is i keep asking crazy people like the joker and james gordon jr for help maybe i just need to go crazy too and put this centibite shit on my eyes yeah when i saw that i i, I had forgotten that like we actually did get the batman who last origin i'm thinking yes well maybe this is maybe this isn't like set on on the um on the main prime universe maybe this is like mm. the batman who laughs universe and this is the origin of the batman who laughs that's you know that's a theory people have been kicking around since issue one the maybe this isn't the main universe and that's going to be the big reveal the ha 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 we were actually on like earth 53 the one right next door and this is batman who laughs planning to go fight the real batman yeah yeah that's what it kind of felt like and um again we still don't like have any real like motivation for the batman in the last like yeah he wants to like kind of blow up gotham i guess kind of but he, then he wants to turn 
he's doing something with like other bruce waynes as well like bringing them in well he needs to kill them to get their cells because he's trying to create some sort of serum some sort of like dark universe serum that that will turn dark like him because he's trying to like recreate his earth on this earth for some reason yeah yeah and like is it going to be revealed that yeah this earth is like as you said earth 53 or whatever and he's doing this to every earth in the multiverse or something or well i i almost think like that's like that kind of has to be how it has to end now because yeah. another story they said was that apparently we're going to be getting an ongoing batman who laughs series after this oh really <laughs> yes which again okay. i'm like okay well will this one be following the batman who laughs because i thought this mini series was going to be about him but it's not it's actually about bruce fighting him yeah but then yeah that bruce might not actually be the main universe bruce <laughs> As we've seen, there are multiple many Bruce's. Because yeah, as and as as we've seen, the Batman who laughs is currently on the Legion of Doom. Yes, yes, he's locked up in there. Yeah. So yeah, when does this take place? I mean, I assume the Batman who laughs just comes and goes whenever he pleases. <laughs> hey, I'm back. <laughs> what are you doing, fucking with Batman? No, uh, oh, also the usual. He's he's also apparently in that Terrifics book too for a bit. I don't know. Maybe. Is he? I thought he was in that. I think he was. I think he was in that for a bit, too. Okay, I kind of fell off on that. Yeah, same same here. I mean, so did everyone, I think. Yeah, uh, it, it was weird, because it was right around the time the Fantastic Four came back. Yeah, what's <laughs> up with that, right? It's like, man, you know, this, this imitation brand was good, but I don't need the imitation brand anymore. <laughs> I got real craft peanut butter now. <laughs> That's that's a real Canadian reference there. Go- Google what Kraft peanut butter is, everybody. <laughs> and then you'll know. T- better yet, t- order some Kraft peanut butter, taste it, and know, know for real. <laughs> and have some malt vinegar on your chips, too. <laughs> You're missing out on that, malt vinegar not being a condiment on every table. <laughs> I imagine that's more the case in Britain and Australia, too. It's more of a colony thing. Yeah, we, we've got that. Yeah, it was a history of our colonizers eating their fish and chips and only having the finest malt vinegars to go with them. <laughs> See, you have a revolution and you lose your HP sauce and you lose your malt vinegar privileges. <laughs> it's written there in a charter somewhere. I read it in a book called History. Pick it up sometime. <laughs> But yeah, Batman Who Laughs is solid. It's fun stuff. Yeah, I feel like there has to be a twist at the end of this because like it's like this can't all be happening in the main universe. Yeah, or maybe it, it is. I don't know. Well, the, see, that's the thing. Batman's like Bruce basically is, is a villain now. Where like where is everyone else? <laughs> yeah, it's like now that that bell has been rung, how are you gonna unring that bell? Yeah, yeah. Because obviously the Batman Who Laughs when he got corrupted by Joker poison on his Earth. He never got changed back and no one ever changed him back no and then he killed all of the justice league and like all the heroes of his wor- world yeah so here's here's hoping you got a backup plan yeah although again you know that's that's, that's a way they could take it too where it's like oh but this batman won because our batman from this universe is the most batman batman whoever batman <laughs> He's like the rickest Rick from Rick and Morty. That's why. That's why I win because I'm the best version of me in the multiverse. <laughs> even e- even though arguably Batman Who Laughs kind of shuts that idea down in the previous issue, and he's like, "No, of all the Bruces I've visited in all the multiverse, you're actually the most miserable." Yeah, 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 yeah. And he that he's doing that like he's getting like all the Bruces he's get are ones that have like lived happy lives, isn't he? And are and are more well adjusted even the one we saw in this issue who was a criminal crime boss he's like yeah this this is a bruce who won his war on crime and he won it yeah. by embracing it and legalizing it and yeah. working within the bounds of crime and he had a turtleneck and a porn stash yeah and he was bored and yeah <laughs> and he's like and guess what this bruce won like yeah. you see you haven't won because you're still afraid to fight the criminals on their terms this guy did maybe he sold his soul along the way who knows but he did it hey, but he was happy <laughs> Yeah, I like this book, too, because this book uh, lends credence to an idea I have always had in my own headcanon, and that is Penguin will be the last Batman villain standing at the end of it all. He he, he really will be. And isn't he also in, he's in like, I can't remember who's writing the story, but it's like an action comic story with him in it. And he's like the last villain left alive. And it's like an old Bruce and him talking. 
Yeah, I, I remember that one too. Because it just makes sense to me. Because, you know, Penguin, he's not as theatric as the other ones. He's no. not as crazy as the other ones. He knows when he's beaten and he'll back off. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and as um, uh, Batman Who Loves said in this issue, like, like Batman respects his effort, his ethics in, in, yeah. g- in gaining this empire. There are lines the Penguin will not cross. Yeah, yeah. Which, again, shows how not crazy he is. <laughs> but yeah that's uh, that was a good one batman who laughs is good anytime scott snyder can write another batman story it's a good day yeah uh what else did we have matt what else would you like uh, to talk about i read wonder twins issue one okay you read this and i didn't and it actually seemed like you enjoyed this it was a really cool book uh it's a, it's a comedy by the sounds it, of it it is very much a comedy written by mark russell and it's who like, i like it's just like an issue that reintroduces and introduces the wonder twins to a new generation it tells you like who they are okay there's brother and sister twins that live on this world that rejects them because their powers don't work right um so they come to earth superman brings them to earth and gives them uh enrolls them in a high school and gives them a job at the hall of justice oh and it's just about them sort of adapting to earth school life and how zan the the boy wants to become the most popular kid in school and he's got a plan to he's got like a step plan he's gonna have a, a cool pet and a cool nickname and none of that actually works because um <laughs> in a great bit of like like sort of earth sort of alien symmetry like he ends up getting the his species version of like puberty uh, in the middle of gym class, he gets what's called nice. the, the thunder lust, which is what, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is on on his planet. Whenever there's a thunderstorm, his people basically r- turn into like sex animals. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, wait, wait, wait did, did, is Mark Russell the guy who wrote Prez and that Flintstones book? I think so. Yes, he was also okay. writing. He was also writing that new Second Coming book, I believe, which got oh, canceled. That which again because of more twitter bullshit astroturfing yeah. i wasn't gonna read it but i feel bad for him because of that yeah and it, yeah he gets that in the middle of like gym class and everyone starts calling him thunderlust because of it um and then a neat, neat bit of like um like parenting i guess that the justice league batman's like saying oh all kids are like that like when i was a kid i passed a love note to a friend and the teacher read it and for a whole year i was called bg's <laughs> <laughs> and like and they, they and yeah they're sort of saying like hey everyone goes through this in high school you just need to like get through it and not right. not 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 take any notice to it and all while this is happening the justice league in the background of the book are fighting mr mitzel spitlick and ah, um they, they have to like f- find like ways to defeat him and everything and it ends up being the wonder twins who defeat him because they work in an old control room that records every every word everyone says like right. for, for like records and stuff and Mixel Spitlick gets into the room and they record his his him saying his name and they just play it backwards <laughs> smart but but the thing is as well like the book is self-aware of like that's not how it works and Mrs. Spitlick's like hey you can't do that that's not how it works but it still works anyway <laughs> yes he is the guy who wrote Prez and yeah. Flintstones and that Snag of Puss but which man I fucking loved that Prez book I didn't know was he good. was writing this now that good. I know he's writing this, I kind of want to read because he's fucking funny. When it was first announced, I originally thought it was Bendis writing because I thought, oh, Bendis is going to be writing all of these because it's one his books. line. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, oh, well, like, he was going to be like co-writing it or something. Um, but yeah, his name isn't on the book at all. Um, and yeah, it was it was great. It was a great little comedy book. Which you know what? Again, I said you know uh, there's no way a Wonder Twins book can work in this day and age. But you know what? A Prez book shouldn't have worked, and a Flintstones no. book shouldn't have worked. And he made those work and like yeah. must reads. And God, I'm still mad about Prez not getting a proper finale. It got six issues and they cut it off. And God damn it, <laughs> Prez was so good. And like it was good too because you know Russell, he's also like a political satirist, and I think he wrote for SNL for a minute too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, you sold me on Wonder Twins, Matt. You did it. <laughs> did you think that would be a thing you would ever say? You've been sold no. on a Wonder Twins book. <laughs> I was I was so fine being like, and I don't need Wonder Twins in my life, and now you told me, oh, Mark Russell, which shows you what blinders I had on for the book the whole time. <laughs> but now you tell me Mark Russell, and I'm like, fuck, now I have to read it. <laughs> 
Yeah, check check Wonder Twins out, and also double check it out because if they canceled Second Coming, I'd like this guy to keep getting work, and so it's not like another couple years before he gets another comic gig. I, well, I think I think Second Coming is coming out because I know like um when DC canceled it, he still he, he still has the rights to it all, so right. I think he's going to su- yeah, I think he's going to like somewhere else. But yeah, at the right. same time, I was really looking forward to that book. Yeah, it looked funny. Yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Although, again, again, I, I don't know what his like leanings are on Twitter there, but this feels like another one of those astro turfing things where someone took was. offense to him and drummed up a controversy to try and get it, you know, shut down. I think that's exactly what it was. Which sucks that we live in this day and age where that is becoming all too common in the comic book sphere and comic book companies. You know who you are are yeah. doing way too much to capitulate to this bullshit. What you what they need to do, Matt is hire the comic multiverse to be able to dig through this stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is what they need to do. We, we, we'd sort it right. But yeah, that God, God damn it, man. You've sold me on fucking Wonder Twins. Yeah, yeah, it, it was really good. It makes me want to also, like, he's currently writing a Lone Ranger book as well for Ooh, Dynamite cool. or someone, and it makes me want to go pick that up as well. Because it'll probably be a really funny deconstruction of yeah. the Lone Ranger. Yeah, yeah which I think is what we could use in this day and age for the Lone Ranger, especially after that last movie didn't hit. Maybe, maybe it'll be a big joke about the movie. <laughs> uh, I guess the only other uh, book... Well, no, I had a couple more, but uh, I guess we can talk about The Flash, too, if you want. Mm, the Flash, yeah. Yes, the continuation of The Price. Yes, a pretty good continuation. It is. I think the book is at its strongest when it's just Batman and the Flash palling around trying to solve a mystery. It is, and I, I like that they have that that like added like dynamic of them like not wanting to work together because of Sanctuary or well, its death, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's it's a nice touch. The the bit that made me be like, wow, that's so smart and so clever, but also so totally sad within the universe that the story takes place. Flash actually says to Batman, hey, how's married life treating you? And then I'm like, oh, oh, my God. Batman didn't tell anyone in the Justice tell that, anyone. His, that his wedding didn't happen. And I'm like, well, yeah, OK, that tracks with Batman's character. He wouldn't want to share his personal pain with people. He's probably super embarrassed. But at the same time, wow. What shitty friends are the guys on the Justice League that they never stopped by to say hello or even drop off a wedding gift? Because remember, Batman was planning a big wedding. He picked Nightwing to be his best Mm -hmm. man. Superman was in a story. It was going to be a huge thing. But then at the last second, he's like, nope, we're going to elope. We're going to have a wedding on top of this building. And no one looked in on him. (laughs) No. No one did anything. Well, you see, no one wanted to be written by Tom Tom King. So they're like, let's stay away. He's doing some weird shit with, like, nightmares. I don't know what's it's, happening. <laughs> it's like, on one hand, I'm like, ha Josh Williamson, that's a funny joke. That's really good. That's also something totally Barry would say, because Barry's a good, considerate person. And then I wanted to, like, yell into my fist. I'm like, God, no one did anything. Are you for real? <laughs> I mean, again, just shows you how much of a shit show that wedding really was. <laughs> And that's the problem with this issue, too. Whenever, like, Williamson is free to do his own thing and just have Batman and the Flash palling around talking about life and solving mysteries, it's good, it's good stuff. Yeah. It's good stuff. But then every time he has to rub up against something King Red, I'm like, oh, my God, it's even dumber coming out of Williamson's yeah. mouth. Yeah, again, he's, like, he's like stuck in these constraints where it's like, I have to write it like this because there's no other way without, like, completely, like, retconning all that other stuff and i can't do that because king doesn't want me to do that and and then again like as well like there's a couple of lines there where like it felt like he was kind of having a shot at king as well like like the the line about like barry going like where did gotham girl get her costume made did you even bother to look into any of this stuff and bruce is like i was really busy no and it's like well wow world's greatest detective you've got quite a few unsolved cases there bruce (laughs) He, he, and for a second there, Flash started sounding like us, didn't yeah, he? For poking yeah. holes in King's flimsy ass stories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which again, too. But then it also comes back to like, okay, so yeah, they already had costumes pre-made by the time they showed up, and we saw little drawings they did as kids. So they had been mm-hmm. planning this for a long time. Which means they had a secret benefactor which they imply is Bane. So again, Bane was behind. Well, they it don't. All. They don't just imply as Bane. We actually get to see Bane in this issue it's definitely goddamn man because he's supplying them with the, the the venom and everything which i really appreciate williamson actually said yes bane is doing this unlike king who steps around at every chance he can fucking get 
it's it's so weird because you see Bane at the beginning and he's a big shadowy figure with a green vial. Like, well, it's clearly Bane. What's the point of showing him in shadow? It's Bane. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, she's hiding out on an island known for drug running. Uh, Bane runs drugs in the uh, in the tropics when he's not being a supervillain. And then they're like, oh, the key ingredient in these uh, in this juice that she's shooting up into her dead brother is venom. Like, it's Bane. Just say it. <laughs> Just say, say it. it's fucking Bane. Maybe that's like again something he's constrained by. Like he can't say it's Bane. He can't. You know, he has to play by a king's rules basically. Because again, wouldn't Batman be like, "Oh, well, Bane's supposed to be locked up in Arkham right now. How is he? How is he pulling again, all these strings?" Again, like, why is it, again constraints by King? Like, why isn't Batman going? It's like this fucking proves Bane is is this proves that me going and assaulting him, like, while it was wrong, I was actually right about him being behind <laughs> all of this. <laughs> I have well, proof. Because then, then I guess Batman would have to say that to the Flash, and the Flash would be like, dude, you're a fucking monster. <laughs> fucking crazy. But, uh, again, that'd be really great great drama. Like, people actually start, like, like Batman broaching what he's doing in his actual book is wrong, and people actually yeah. saying, like, dude, you should probably, you know, seek seek help. But then you had Sanctuary, you know? <laughs> That's, that's not the most annoying thing, though. I'll tell you what my most annoying thing was. And again, none of this is Williamson's fault. Williamson, no, again, no. Is, is working in the framework that King has set up. But this is true of Heroes in Crisis, and it's especially true of this, that uh, when uh, Barry is walking around in, like, the secret lab, and he's like, oh, this, this is a mask from Sanctuary. Bruce, what is this doing here? And I'm like, hey. Hey Flash, did 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 you notice that looks like the Psycho Pirates mask? Is is anyone gonna bring this up that these masks that they wear in Sanctuary look look like the Psycho Pirates? Why why is no one mentioning this? Also, this all gives them leads to continue in Heroes in Crisis, which we both know will never actually happen. No, it doesn't matter now because apparently Barry found something completely different that yeah. proved. <laughs> that proved what was going on so this 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 tie-in meant nothing in the greater <laughs> scheme of things already because they already kind of solved it but didn't solve it yeah god damn it oh also this one hit me too when i was talking about this one on twitter with sal where it's like okay so bruce thought the masks okay let, let's say they have nothing to do with psycho pirate and he just thought they were cool why in a place that was meant for heroes to heal their mental problems and deal with the stigma around it and everything, did you have a mask related to a villain who had the word psycho in his name for your therapy <laughs> building? <laughs> How did Superman and Wonder Woman not step in and go, that's, that's really fucked up, Batman? <laughs> Why did they that's... think, like, having, like, physical, like, props like that would hide identities? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, just do something neutral. <laughs> And they and they make and they make a point of saying the Trinity worked on this together. I'm like, why? Yeah. How did Clark and Diana sign off on that? Uh, King made them. King writes them as fucking idiots. So, you uh, know. King also thinks you can break the lasso of truth. So, yeah. and, and for some reason, the the, the, it, the sanctuary is powered by Wonder Woman's compassion. Which can you? pile or something with like how does that work <laughs> she's just that compassionate just every day i care i care about you so much and the generators light up <laughs> also superman isn't fast enough to stop harley quinn too no no That's and, and her her hammer can can kill wally west the fastest yeah. speedster in, in in the dc universe <laughs> but it's a big hammer matt it's a really really big hammer <laughs> like this bit <laughs> but yeah that was that was the flash it's good williamson's good all the stuff around it is hard to swallow though. yeah again he's he, he's stuck by the constraints that that king has left him he can't you can tell he wants to do stuff but he can't he's making the best of a bad situation <laughs> if anything he's actually doing something with some like properties that like king kind of forgot about I yeah. Gotham Gotham Girl. He's actually doing stuff with them. Yeah, remember when Gotham Girl was important early <laughs> yeah. on in that run? Yeah, they oh. just wouldn't stop talking about her, and then she just disappeared. <laughs> Batman also refuses to bring up too. Yes, I, I helped her. I helped uh, uh, Courtney or Clarice or whatever the hell her name is. I helped her. I fixed her mind with the psycho pirate mask. Yes, <laughs> yeah. the, the the psycho pirate mask. <laughs> say it batman say this device a villain uses 
yeah, why? Like, Batman just refu- – at first I thought he was doing it intentionally. Like, oh, Batman doesn't want to admit he used the Psycho Pirate's mask to help out uh, Gotham Girl because he's yeah. going to seem like a dangerous idiot because he's a dangerous idiot in Tom King's book. But then I'm like, oh, my God, he's, they're just not going to mention it, are they? Because the, this whole house of cards will come tumbling down if they mention that. <laughs> So we're just gonna put our fingers in our ears and go la 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 la. Didn't happen. <laughs> uh, moving on. What else did you have, man? I, I had two more books. Uh, what else did I have? I had um, Superman issue eight. I have not read this yet. Oof, what an issue. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> G- good or good or bad. What an issue. <laughs> it's it's pretty bad. Um, what a what a bend is. <laughs> oh, it, it's oh, it's so frustrating because like half the book is written in proper sentences that make sense then the other half as i said in my review king he uh bendis tries to do this thing where he tries to talk quote unquote casual and it comes off sounding sounding like an alien you know or someone that's been like kicked in the head by a horse (laughs) uh it's just so strange so like it continues from last issue where uh john has returned he's 17 years old uh his parents uh, take him to the fortress and start running scans on him to make sure he is indeed John. Uh, right. And as as he's getting his scans run, he tells his parents like what happened. Like he was with his uh, grandfather and his grandfather. Like nothing Jorel does in this book is evil. Like nothing, nothing shouts like oh he's gone crazy like he actually a lot of the time says he'll take john home because he can he can see that john isn't enjoying himself or like making good of this this time or anything um the one thing that does uh strike me as as pretty interesting but never do anything with it we learned that like every time john and joel have gone on a mission to like deal with something he uh, Jora was trying to do like what his son does and negotiate and everything but it always ends in violence and that, right. that it's just a throwaway line i'm like that's interesting do something with that don't get to that, do anything with it that ties much deeper into or it should tie in deeper to what we saw mr oz's take of the human race was yeah. in the world and his relation to violence because you know before he was he was a man of science he wasn't mm-hmm. a fighting guy it wasn't until he got to earth and saw all the horror and messed up stuff there that he became a fighty guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, doesn't do anything. It's like a throwaway line. And, That's um, a shit. I, and one time they're fighting a bunch of Thanagarians, which doesn't make any sense because Thanagarians are kind of near extinct at the moment. Mm. You know, um, and they meet Killawog and Arissa, the Green Lanterns. And... Oh, <laughs> this is like this like this this panel is like where the dialogue just starts getting super weird like john sees him and is like hey it's kilowog from the green lanterns and this person from the green lanterns i'm like what the fuck is going on here have you met these people <laughs> no it's like the way he said it like you know like, like those bad like cameo like appearances it's, it's this person hey, from this kids, it's... yeah yeah it was so bad and he talks with Kilowog and talks about like maybe wanting to leave his grandfather because something's up and Kilowog's like hey is something going wrong with this and then Jorel appears and then they just take off <laughs> they just leave uh-huh. <laughs> no you know no something like, I'll get a word to your father or anything because you know the yeah. week, week before Kilowog actually saw Superman in that Justice League annual at the source wall you know, never mentioned Indeed anything never mentioned anything about his son you know um and yeah, they, they they end up going back onto the ship, and Joel doesn't talk with John for like about a year. <laughs> <laughs> talk about a cold shoulder. Yeah, and then and then like he decides to talk to him, but then it's too late because they get sucked into a black hole, and I I have no idea what the hell's going on. But like John winds up on Earth three with the crime syndicate. <laughs> i have no fucking idea (laughs) wasn't earth 3 destroyed was that not the whole point why the crime syndicate left i don't know i don't know or is this a different crime syndicate it's seen to imply it's the the proper it's like ultraman superwoman owl man all of those guys (laughs) the ones from forever evil or like the ones from grant morrison's earth 3 the ones from forever evil they look exactly the same the only person who isn't there is atomica but didn't 
But Owlman got killed, though. Owlman got <laughs> yeah, blown up by Metron when he sat on the No, Mobius he got blown chair. up by Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> oh, that's right. He did. What? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. This book was so fucking weird. Sounds very confusing. I'm. I'm it is so confusing. I, I'm not upset that I waited. Oh. To, I like what. what when I put my books in order for what to read in the week, I kept it like, eh, Superman's going to get pushed all the way down there. Yeah. Oh, I forgot, like, another thing that was, again, something really interesting that would have been cool to see more of, but we never knew. So, like, when uh, the scans are happening, Superman decides to leave, and he's he flies around the world, and he's super angry that his father has taken away his opportunity to see his son grow and you see this anger building in him and he's like it wasn't any of his any of his villains he's fought over the end any many years it was his father who did this to him that's really mm -hmm. cool nothing comes of that all he does is like okay i gotta stop with this anger but then he doesn't because he sees mongol we're not sure which mongol um turn mongol up... one mongol two <laughs> mongol junior we don't know <laughs> turn up at the old fortress of solitude so he's like right well i'm gonna take all my anger out on mongol and mongol you know you don't even know if he's there to attack he could be just coming to say hi and, <laughs> and, and superman be beats him up <laughs> and wow like, i'm like there's something really interesting there go with that oh no we're moving on also, I think you already had a pretty good reason to hate Mr. Oz before, what with the whole trying to destroy Metropolis and trying to steal your son away from you the first time. Yeah. In the in the Jurgens Tomasi stuff. The, 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 Lo Lois in this issue says like we were tricked by him. I'm like, no, you weren't. He just said I want to take your son and into the universe, and you just let him. <laughs> yeah, he di he didn't trick you. You were just <laughs> yeah. dumb. You should have known. <laughs> God damn it. And then, then again, like Joel is. Uh, isn't doing anything bad like he's he's protecting people out he's not he's obviously not as good as his own son and there was an interesting point but you glossed over that and like what is he doing that is bad in particular except for all the stuff he did before that ben yeah, just yeah, to reference. yeah well, why why is why is superboy like so adamant that he's doing something bad when he's not <laughs> Remember when he tried to blow up Metropolis with suicide bombers, like, only, like, a year and a half ago? <laughs> remember that? Oh, God. <laughs> I remember that. I read it. Bendis didn't. <laughs> no. No, he didn't, and he refuses to. <laughs> oh, God. It is so strange when we've got this book, but then we've got, like, Action Comics, which is pretty decent. It's getting better. Yeah, but, like, this one is just, like, does he, does, like, Bendis, like, take a shot of bleach when he writes this book or something it's it's because he doesn't care he's not interested but he has to write it anyway because if he doesn't write it fans will be upset but they're more upset when he does write it so he should just do what he's doing in action <laughs> comics and don't write it well he should just let someone else write it right um it's a main superman book i don't know again like as we said when we we talked about young justice last week those are the characters he feels like he wanted to write and yes he couldn't so he just like oh well, i'll just do superman because that's a mainline yeah. book like he wanted to do them but they wouldn't allow him to just do young justice or probably too for the money they're paying him yeah, like, yeah. you might as well write a couple books at this point <laughs> again we don't know how much he's getting paid but we know it's multiple digits and that he's currently the highest paid person at dc maybe in all of comics currently yeah yeah it's it's quite a bit of money it's probably why they're trying I to cut back money and sell free comics for 25 cents for 25 cents as we were saying you gotta you gotta get that bendis money guys you gotta get that somewhere <laughs> yeah. bendis money don't grow on trees i don't is like it's like are his superman books even selling that good you know i don't actually know i i would like to think that if they weren't selling well we would have heard about that that because, they wouldn't have put up with this yeah no as well as like all the people that fucking hate him would be like parading that around as well there's you would think so there's there's probably a threshold mm -hmm. where if the book starts selling below this amount they'll kick him off it but mm -hmm. so long as it stays above a certain amount mm -hmm. he gets to keep writing and gets to keep writing all these multiple books and which again i don't know what that was in comparison to the jurgens and tomasi era but yeah yeah well people a lot of people goddamn loved tomasi and for good reason as well yes it's it was one of the best runs the jurgens tomasi era was one of the best eras for action comics and superman they both felt very different and very uh distinct yet also felt you know that they were in the same universe and that you were watching chapters from this guy's life yeah here they just feel different 
Yeah. Just completely different. It's it's the damnedest. Yeah. But you know, hey, bring bring on the new twenty two, everybody. That'll clean things up. We'll just <laughs> cut it down to twenty two books. Oh god. <laughs> That, uh, that feels like a topic video, something we should do at some point. Okay, 22 titles, what do we cut it down to? What do we need? Yeah. I, I can't even name, like, all of the books DC have got going at the moment. There's so it's many true. of them. And, you know, and I know that's a popular theory, too, right now. Where it's like, you know, what what do we need to stabilize the comic industry? What would help? And one of the most prevailing theories is, well, both companies just print too many books. We need to, like, cut it down. I think DC's idea is we'll cut it down to 22 We'll do some digital, and then we'll do the rest Walmart exclusives. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's the thing. It could work out for them, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they're trying new things. I will never decry them for trying new things. And with the Walmart books, it's like, okay, really what we're doing is we're just like, we're doing like one new book, and then we're charging extra for old stories that we're jamming in there. Yeah, yeah. But people love Digestus. People love yeah. Archies and yeah. Sonics for the same reasons. Yeah, they sell. And I've been saying forever where it's like, you know, that's what they need to do. You need to get comics more places people buy them. And, like, I, I don't know if it's happened yet, but there's deals that we were talking about before that they're inking with GameStop to try and get some more comics in there. Yeah, yeah, the GameStop, you've got Walmart. I'm sure they'll probably have, like, some other shop, like, supermarkets or something soon. So that they I wish they'd go back to the drugstores and the supermarkets. Mm, yeah. Ha ha hasn't been in my GameStop yet. As soon as they hit my GameStop, I'll tell you all about it. We, 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 get, we get them here at, like, our EB Games, but we get them in, like, just trade. Uh, we only get trades. That's all we get. Yeah. Yeah. Which, again, I don't see them at mine yet. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I had two more books I read this week, and they were very brief. What did you read? Uh, I read Justice League Dark. Mm -hmm. Which I, uh, I felt like and... jumping on on this issue, because I know it's the start of a new arc, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think you could probably... You could, you I've could been probably, from vaguely what I'm, keeping up with the book, though. Yeah, from what I told, you could probably get along here. Basically, you know, the magic community is fucked. The other kid <laughs> are destroying and eating as many magic users as they can. Felix Faust gets ruined. Papa Midnight gets ruined. Oh, no. Papa Midnight. <laughs> I know, the Constantine character, not Papa Midnight. Uh, actually, a lot of Constantine villains get messed up in here. Uh, Zatanna eats the war or the uh, Demons 3. She, like, absorbs their power. Oh, nice. <laughs> And Wonder Woman's like, is that a good idea? And Zatanna's like, nothing's a good idea anymore. I need as much power as I can get <laughs> if we're going to defeat these guys. Uh, Man Bat has gone crazy because he keeps writing all of their adventures they've had with the other kin yeah. who are like Lovecraftian Cthulhu monsters. And the more he writes, the crazier he gets. Okay. So Wonder Woman's like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to lock you in the base now, Kurt. So uh, good luck with that. <laughs> And Kirk's like, fine, lock me in here. I'll teach myself magic. It can't be any different than science. <laughs> and he does, and he teaches himself magic, and he uh, breaks out Khalid, the former Doctor Fate, from his prison. Oh, nice. Oh, oh yeah, the, the, the kid. The, oh, wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, Kid Fate, they bring him back, and Langstrom's like, so Doctor Fate went to the dark side, and he's helping out the bad guys now, so I figure we could use another Doctor Fate. You want to help us? <laughs> hey, while you're at it, bring back the... the the earth 2 one please <laughs> yeah yeah why not yeah sure we might as well do that where'd those earth 2 characters go <laughs> and uh, and khalid actually has a pretty dire warning he's like yeah you guys are worried about fighting the upside down man and you're worried about fighting the other kind but here's your problem uh dr fate was one of you he was a lord of order so he knows how you think and he knows what you're gonna do next so <laughs> Like, he's already a step ahead of you, and, like, Detective Chimp and all of them, like, okay, we got all these magic refugees, we gotta get out of here, we gotta get them to, uh, Myra, that other dimension where they can be safe, and Dr. Fate's already waiting for them there, oh, and the more evil he gets, the more fucked up he gets, his helmet's getting all, like, melty and stuff now. Ooh, cool. It's very creepy, and he's like, yeah, I've come to stop you now, also, I'm not alone, here are the other Lords of Order who you've never met before. Oh, no. <laughs> So he's got, like, a whole crew of Lords of Order. He's turned to the dark side now. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's really cool, and they've got great designs, and and they all, they've all they all got, like, some sort of, mm -hmm. sort of golden face covering. Like, yeah. one's got, like a, like, a drapey thing. One's got a helmet, but a different kind of helmet. Mm -hmm. It's really clever, and Zatanna's big thing is, like, well, if the Lords of Order have turned against us, I guess we need to get some help from the Lords of Chaos. Uh, I need to find Mordru the Merciless, the original Lord of Chaos. Oh, that's cool. 
who is like a Jim Shooter character from the 60s. I'm like, holy yeah. crap, no one's talked about more Drew forever. More Drew only shows up in stuff like Justice League and Young Justice when they're like, oh, we've assembled all the greatest dark wizards, and he's like the uninteresting looking one in the back. <laughs> But they're like, no, Mordru is actually the is the key to all of this. <laughs> Jeez. We need to find him. Yeah, Justice League Dark is great. James Tynan is having a blast writing that book. Every issue is something new and fun and interesting. Yeah, I, I'm thinking now that I'm like like getting to the point where I'm catching up on all my books, I might actually pick it back up. Because it was it's really good. great. This is a great issue, and the one before is a great issue where it's Man Bat writing the stories, and it's literally mm -hmm. them touching every every magical character in the dc universe they can think of like here's i am vampire and here's you know yeah, yeah. uh frankenstein and the agents of shade and here's like a bunch of characters we forgot about yeah and seeing how the other kind affect them it's a great book it's a fun book i like it a lot that's cool and uh the last one i read and this one was super super brief uh winter soldier number three from kyle higgins oh nice this is a really great book. It's only a five-part miniseries, so it's almost over now. Ooh, wow. But, uh, yeah, uh, Bucky has adopted a kid. His name is RJ. Mm -hmm. He was a child soldier for yeah. Hydra that was sent to kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, and he had a uh, costume that looked like Bucky's old one. He looks exactly like Bucky. Uh, Bucky helps him defeat his handler, this dude named Mr. Cult, who might be one of the most evil non-supervillain characters I've read in a long time. Yeah, yeah oh he's just a very realistic piece of shit and like he just verbally abuses and manipulates rj in these flashbacks and like you know he buys this big breakfast for himself and he's just eating it and he's like if you want to eat you have to kill so he sends him to kill a bunch of people in the diner and he's like you know oh you left that one alive you didn't kill them all the way then he like throws all the food off the table it's like eat it off the ground oh jeez <laughs> Oh, he's an evil son of a bitch. And, like, he, he, he looks like the Aryan ideal. He's got blonde hair and blue eyes, and he fights with two nunchucks. Cool. Yeah, he's he's really evil, but the, Bucky defeated him in the last issue. This this is all about him, like, trying to get RJ to, like, live a normal life and to, like, undo <laughs> yeah, yeah. the high programming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't do it alone, though. He gets Doc Samson to come and help him. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, remember Brian Michael Bendis resurrected Doc Samson for Civil War II, then yeah. did nothing with him? Yeah, yeah, I always thought, yeah, he was going to be a big part of that, but yeah, nothing ever happened with him. He shows up here, and he's like Bucky and this kid's psychiatrist, and the kid actually burns him pretty good. Where he's like, oh, yeah, you're the you're the Hulk psychiatrist, huh? Oh, you did a bang-up job with him. I'm sure you're going to do a great <laughs> job with me. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, he burns him really, really good. Actually, th this book is filled with great little burns because uh, there's a bit later on where Bucky's like, hey, you know, uh, you're living a brand new life now. RJ is what Hydra called you. You can be whatever you want. Do you do you want to be Rick? We can drop the drop the K on Rick and you can be R.I.C. Rick. And I'm like, wait, like like Rick Grayson from Nightwing. <laughs> oh, my God, Kyle Higgins, you're referencing the book you used to write for DC. <laughs> And how stupid the new run is. <laughs> you cheeky boy, Kyle. That's why I love you. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, Winter Soldier is great. I feel this is one of these books I'm going to be talking about at the end of the year and be like, this was a great book. You all slept on it. Why aren't more people reading this? Yeah, yeah. That sounds awesome. And it's a mini, so you can pick it up whenever you want, everybody. It's a great book. I, I would love to see this become an ongoing. I'm surprised it's not an ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, I really yeah, am. This yeah. this feels like Higgins has more stories to tell. Hey, well, with with uh, uh, invaders coming out with with Bucky and that, maybe it will drum up some some uh, interest, interest yeah. in him. It's great because it's the first book I've read in a long time where Winter Soldier doesn't even have in Captain America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, he's doing his own thing. Out on Yes, for once his own thing, and this is the furthest out from his shadow he's been. And the best way they do it, where it's like, well, how do you? How do you give a sidekick something to do that he's never done before? We'll give him a sidekick. Mm -hmm. He's matured to that level. But yeah, that, that book's great. And that's everything I read this week. I, uh, I also had the new Miss Marvel, but I haven't read that yet. That's G. Willow Wilson's last issue in the big celebration of five years of the character. Yeah. Did cool. you have anything else you uh, wanted to talk about? No, no, I didn't. All right, so I think we're about on time on that one uh yeah oh yeah we're a little over actually we usually go an hour 30 we've gone about an hour 40 awesome 
Alrighty then. So thank you everyone for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed it. I know Matt and I always enjoy getting to come and talk to you every week. It's a big part of what we do. And, you know, it's always so nice to know that people like the show and then they comment and they do the thumbs up and they download the show over on the iTunes and the SoundCloud on Thursday <laughs> when I remember to upload it. <laughs> sometimes that I is don't. if your audio doesn't fuck up and i have to i have to save everything <laughs> if matt does it man matt is the glue that keeps this enterprise <laughs> together there are so many episodes i would have just said fuck it you're not getting it this week <laughs> matt saved so many episodes but hopefully he won't have to save this week's because i think everything is actually running optimally for once <laughs> But yes, thank you everyone for watching and listening. Uh, as always, be sure to follow Matt and myself on Twitter so you're always up to date on what we're doing next. Links down in the description. Uh, if you're looking to buy comics, as always, be sure to check out our book depository links down in the description. Uh, you get an amazing deal with book depository. It's the only place I use for buying trades mm -hmm. because you don't pay a cent for shipping and handling. Nope. nope which is always a must. And if you use our particular links, uh, a small amount of what you buy goes to support me, Matt, and the channel, and it all gets put back in there. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're a patron, same deal. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. You'll get to listen to this show first before anyone else, usually Sunday night. I try and put it up as soon as we're done, which, you know, is usually around midnight, give or take. Uh -huh. But, uh, yes, you can listen to the audio version, and you can watch the video version, too. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's that. Any uh, anything else to talk about, Matt? Uh, no, I I expect by the time this actually comes out, all my uh, backlog of reviews will be going out into the world. That's so good. keep an eye out for them. Uh, I'll put this out in the universe too. Uh, I may be attending the Toronto Comic Con March fifteenth. That's a maybe. I've I've written to like several cons in the last little bit. I thought i was going to go to emerald city this year and then i thought i was going to go to capital city in victoria but turns out i'm not going to those places because i'm not going out west okay <laughs> but i might be staying closer to home and i'm like well i got enough money here for a con trip so i might as well take one close to home yeah that's cool also uh you know i would never say to spam someone but uh the cottage city or uh no the uh, the cottage country comic-con in aurelia uh, I have written to them and gotten radio silence and they're only like three hours away from where I actually live and I'm a little disappointed that they haven't written me back so you know go to their Facebook page and the Dr. Comics Twitter that I think is running it and you know maybe maybe the fans should let it be known <laughs> how much you want Cape Joel at these shows <laughs> just saying. I, I would never ask anyone to spam. I'm just saying, maybe maybe let them be known that I'm not full of shit and I command much internet influence. <laughs> and I feel if you've listened to this late in the show, you're you, you know you're you're one of the truest warriors. You're one of the truest VIPs to listen to the end of every show. <laughs> so pitter patter, let's get at her, everyone. Go <laughs> go go carry my banner into battle and plant it for all to see. <laughs> It's a tiny con too. I think it's like a like a like a motel or something in Aurelia. Oh really? But they've actually got like some fairly decent guests. They're like, oh, I'd like to go just to hang out with those guests for a little bit. <laughs> I think they got like like Jake the Snake or something doing like a tour like that. I'm like, oh, I gotta talk to Jake the Snake. <laughs> How does it feel being the dude they based Randy the Ram off of? <laughs> I watched that Netflix documentary of you getting clean. That was hard. <laughs> But good, it was a good watch. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you, everyone. I've I've droned on and talked too much. Thank you for watching and listening. And Matt and I will be back again next week with even more comic multiversey goodness. Say out. <laughs> bye bye.